Alexis, can you tell me a little bit about the Wolf Howl Canoe Trip and, and what sort of activities are going to be happening on that canoe trip? What the Wolf Howl Trip is going to be about is uh, learning about the patterns and the behaviors and the ecology of the Eastern Wolf, which is the wolf that resides here in Algonquin Park. Um, I've spent quite a few uh, summers and winters tracking the wolves here. Uh, just from an educational standpoint to learn and what I'd like to do on this trip is give people a closer understanding of what the wolf is and how it fits into this ecosystem here. Um, so we're going to be looking at, at the things that I mentioned before, its habits, its behaviors and hopefully when we're out there we'll, we'll hear the wolf howl around the campfire at night. Um, we're going to do our best to try to find evidence of its uh, passage, hopefully some tracks, potentially even a sighting. Um, it's going to be really rare uh, to see the wolves out here. They're very secretive animals. And it could be even rare to find signs of their passage. They have very, very large territories here in the park. And it's, uh, it can be tough to find them. But what we're going to do is try to learn a lot about how they move across the landscape, how they relate to the landscape. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll hear them or see some signs of their passage. Um, also, what I'd like to focus on with this trip a lot is going to be about just tracking skills and about learning from the animals. So there's so many beautiful mammals in Algonquin Park that we're, we'll have the chance to track, whether it'll be the moose or the white-tailed deer or the river otter, the minks, uh, or, um, the weasels. There's just so many animals and so much wildlife here. So what I'd like to do is uh, we're, we're going to kind of focus on the wolf. We're going to try to learn from it and hopefully uh, um, come across signs of their passage. But if not, we're going to focus on some of these other animals and we're going to look at the things that we can see in the natural world that uh, that will tell us of their presence and uh, whether it's the signs that they leave behind through their tracks or perhaps through their feeding or uh, bedding areas or whatnot. But we're going to really focus on the mammals and on, on some tracking skills. Um, there's things that we want to look for. We're going to be tracking the weather. We're going to be looking at when it last rained. So those kinds of things are, will help us to age. Um, also knowing how the animals move across the landscape. There's some trails that are only used in the winter, some that are used in the summer. Um, you know, they might go from bedding areas to feeding areas. So we're going to look at a lot of things like that. We're going to, um, you know, we'll, we're going to explore the six arts of tracking um, as well and learn who's a lot of ID skills, who's leaving the tracks, why they're moving the way they are, um, where they're going. And, on a lot of neat things and it's going to be a great trip. Okay, and Alexis, what's your favorite thing about guiding? Um, I guess just being out there, you know, I've always dreamed and uh, of Algonquin Park and the central northern Ontario wilderness. Uh, I, feel, I feel at home there, you know, I feel a real strong connection to the land. So what I really enjoy doing is sharing this kind of thing with people, bringing people out there on a star-filled summer night, uh, camping on an island per se, and, and just watching the sun go down. You know, taking in the tranquility and uh, the serenity of the wilderness. And, uh, you know, I just really want people to experience that in a good way. You know, sleeping out under the stars, perhaps. Uh, enjoying stories by the campfire. Sharing the stories of our tracking days um, when we're out together. And, uh, yeah, so we're, I'm going to do my best to provide that for people and uh, help people gain a deeper connection.